Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. Today I'm finally going to get to start my whitelist. And what is my whitelist? Well, it is the opposite of a blacklist. It is a focus on good comic creators and some good comic companies, some smaller companies, which are actually good to their customers. And the reason why I wanted to do my whitelist is because we have this underlying vein of positivity running through Comicsgate, and I think we need to foster that and make sure that it grows. Because if there's one thing that SJWs can't abide, if there's one thing that they don't understand, it's positivity. They have negativity running through their veins so much, it's infused in their being that they can't even understand positivity. And I want to to be positive with this because well it's kind of like that old D, &D spell turn undead you know you cast it it's a holy spell and when you cast it all the undead in your area just flee away and shrink into the darkness and that's what happens when you're positive around sjw's and so i wanted to continue this positivity in comic skate and focus on these good comic creators and good comic companies and when i say good i only have two criteria for you to get on the list number one you have to be good to your customers personally when you interact with them personally and number two you have to be good to your customers professionally when you interact with them professionally and that is to say with number two that you take criticism and you take what is selling and what is not selling and you incorporate that into this is what the customers want therefore we're going to produce this now these two things in any other time in history would not be too much to ask from any person who was actually trying to sell you something. That number one, they be good to you personally, and number two, that they be good to you professionally. But it is an extraordinary thing in the comic industry today, so I think that we need to give credit where credit is due, and that is partly why I wish to do this whitelist. So the first company that I'm going to focus on and this white list is Antarctic Press. And I know that some of you may still have some bad taste in your mouth about Antarctic Press and what happened between them and Richard Meyer over at Diversity in Comics because Jawbreakers originally was supposed to come out through Antarctic Press and the story goes that Mark Wade contacted Antarctic Press, the owner, and basically made some veiled threats saying that he and the people who worked for him and produced comics with him would pay the price if they put out this comic book. And they had to say no to Richard, and Richard had to go his own way. Now, I think this was a mistake, but I think they've paid for this mistake, and I think they've learned from this mistake, because once you bend the knee to these people, you are never going to stop having to bend the knee to these people. So I do believe that they have learned their lesson from this, and they are going to go back to listening to their customer instead of listening to people like Mark Wade. Now, I'm going to go over something that's coming out of Antarctic Press, the thing that I know the most about, to show you how this company is meeting those two criteria I talked about. And I'm going to go over their new shared universe. And what if you don't know anything about Antarctic Press, it's just a small publishing company. They have comics that come out of it, which when you have one come out, it's basically in its own universe. And that's what happens, and that's all the universe is, and it just exists in those couple of comics. But they're trying to put together a shared universe, something like a Marvel and a DC on a small scale, and they have started it with Jungle Comics. And Jungle Comics was, and I've gone over this in a couple of videos, it was an Indiegogo campaign that actually did fairly well. Um, it didn't do as well as Jawbreakers or Blood Honey, but it did fairly well. It is one of the campaigns that I have personally backed, and the story looked fairly good. It didn't have a whole lot about the story in there in the Indiegogo campaign. I think that was a little bit of a problem there, but I looked at the art with Kelsey Shannon, and it was amazing. This is why I backed this for the most part was because of Kelsey Shannon's art. I actually ordered uh, the perk where you just get Kelsey Shannon's autograph on this book that you're going to receive. That's all that I wanted because of this spectacular art. It's amazing. So the thing is that this campaign did fairly well and what it is doing is it is using public domain characters, your old golden age public domain characters and your old format of jungle comics which used to come out a long time ago and this is what I'm always talking about you know people should be using these public domain heroes I do believe this is the future of comic books and this is what happened with jungle comics now the second phase of this is public domain now public domain is again something I covered in a couple of my videos it's an Indiegogo campaign that is now over uh, it didn't actually reach its um, point where it got fully funded or what it was looking for for fully funding but at the same time 
I've been told that it actually is still coming out. The Indiegogo campaign was simply uh, number one to generate some buzz for this comic that's coming out and number two to give these extra special perks to people in case they wanted them. So even though they didn't reach their goal for public domain, it is still coming out. It's coming out in January and it is going to be using um, a superhero format. That is to say, it's going to be using superheroes from the public domain uh, and it is going to be using mostly um, the superheroes that if you know anything about Dynamite's Project Superpowers, and I've talked about that a number of times in my channel here, it is using the basic set of superheroes that are in the public domain, which are like, um, what, Black Terror and Miss Mask and, you know, others like that. That's the kind of heroes that they're going to be using in this book. Now, at the same time, the way that they are planning to produce this book and the way that they are setting up the future of this shared universe just shows to me that they are going to be spot on listening to their customers and they are going to be going back to an old way of producing comics and the healthy way of producing comics. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to focus on this company because Okay, first of all, you have public domain. Now, public domain is using, utilizing an older comic artist, someone who produced comics with Marvel in the 80s and then went off to work for various companies, then went to work for DreamWorks, and now they're pulling him back into the comic industry. Number one, I would say, this is just me saying this, but I would say, here you have someone who is not, I don't know, tainted by this current industry and your SJW nonsense. And that's great. If you have someone of that experience and someone that can produce on a level, which is, you know, I can produce a comic every month or every second month as public domain is supposed to be coming out. That's great. You should get those people. You should take those people from that time when there was a healthy industry and try to put them back into this industry to try to get it to be a healthy industry, even if it's just for your little corner of the industry. That's great. And at the very same time, you can have younger artists, hopefully, at the very least through social media, if they're publishing with the same publisher, draw on the experience of these older comic creators when they are comic creators from an old healthy industry and see how things worked and hopefully, you know, improve in their art, improve in their storytelling and all of these things. So I think that is something that is really, really can't be understated in what's going to help Antarctic produce these books. And the, the artist that's um, going to be working on public domain is Del Barris. And he's a understudy of Neil Adams. And again, here you have someone who's very professional and that is what comics needs. So other than that, the thing is that when they are looking to create this um, universe, now I've been told um, about what this shared universe is, is some of the characters that they're going to be including in, the, in these comics are older public domain characters, but they're also going to be putting in some newer characters as well. The older characters would include people like Miss Mask and um, the old sidekick of Blue Beetle. They're using Daredevil, the old Daredevil. If you know what the old Daredevil looks like, you would see him in um, Project Superheroes. They're now calling him in that. They're calling him Death Defying Devil. Here they're going to call him Dark Devil because you can't use the name Daredevil anymore. They're also going to be trying to use Airboy, which they already had an Airboy miniseries come out with Antarctic Press. Now, this is the thing that what I have read is that what, how they're going to try to use Airboy is they're going to try to tie Airboy from that old series that they have already had out with Antarctic into their new universe. However, they are going to examine it and make sure that it doesn't conflict with what they are trying to do with their new universe. That is to say, they are going to make sure, make doubly sure, that it doesn't break their continuity. And here you have someone who is producing a comic line which is actually concerned with continuity. Now, if that isn't something that is refreshing in this day and age, I don't know what is. Because you have Marvel breaking continuity all the time. You have DC just smearing its continuity all over the place by rebooting everything so many times. And here you have a small comic company looking to actually make sure that its continuity makes sense. And that is respecting the customer, if you ask me. That is something that they probably don't even think of as respecting the customer. They just think of as producing a good line of comics. And that's what we need. And another one of these things that is happening with 
this uh, new shared universe that I think is extremely important is that what is going to happen with public domain comics is that it's going to come out every second month. So it's going to trade places every month with another comic called Excite Comics. Now Excite Comics is going to be a comic which is basically like your old journey into mystery or your very old detective comics. It's not going to focus on a certain hero and it's not going to focus on a certain genre. It's going to put in different heroes and it's going to put in different kinds of stories and they're going to use all of those characters that I mentioned a few minutes ago and have different kinds of stories and the reason why they're doing this quite specifically is that they are throwing these things out there to see which ones stick with their customers to see which ones have good customer feedback and then they're going to use that as a jumping off point to produce mini series for these characters because they know that there is a customer base out there that wants these heroes and wants these kinds of stories. This is extremely important. This is an old way of trying to gauge what your customers want and it is extremely important and it is extremely important because it is listening to their customers. It is quite specifically putting out comic books out as a test to see what its customers want and it's looking for customer feedback. Again, this is so refreshing to actually hear that a comic company is actually doing this and actually wants to listen to what its customers want and actually wants to produce comics that are for producing good comics, not to produce comics to sell movies or to get you to buy something else like Funko Pop Dolls or anything else. It is producing good comic books and it is making sure that your customer, which is us, is getting a good product and in many ways you know listening to their customers making sure there's, there's a good continuity in their shared universe using good people who actually know how to produce a good comic book being professional all of these things this is what is going to happen with these stories hopefully i didn't get anything wrong if if i have certainly if someone wants to correct me in the comments but this is what i have been told um, is going to happen with these books at antarctic press and it is extremely refreshing to see this level of professionalism in comic books and even though these comics don't particularly appeal to me as much as other sorts of kinds of comic books. You know, they're not exactly my cup of tea. I don't care. When public domain hits the shelves, I'm going to pick up a copy. If my comic company or my comic store is not going to actually stock it, I'm going to order it in. I'm going to look at public domain, um, not just public domain, but Excite Comics, because this is exciting. The fact that you have a comic company actually looking to produce comics based upon what customers want. Can we ask for anything more than that? Right now, in this day and age, in this state of the industry, this is something spectacular. All right, so if I've given you anything new to think about or if I've given you any new information, if I've given you anything about this comic company that is exciting you, you should go and follow Antarctic Press on Twitter and make sure that you know what is coming out and follow some of their um, creators, which I'm going to be putting on my whitelist because they are certainly people who interact well with the customers. So if I have given you um, a good positive feeling, we'll say for this one, not anything new to think about, but a good positive feeling and some good information on these people hit like hit subscribe by hitting that shield in the lower right hand corner of your screen and um, leave me a comment if you have anything to say about Antarctic Press certainly put it in the comments I would love to hear from you all right I'll see you later bye